It's not time.
Hello, class. Good evening. Good evening. Enjoy. Robert, how's everything? Are you guys doing good? How's it going, Ana Maria, Jenny, Janira, and Clara, I think, Alfredo, Walter, David, Sonia. Welcome. Rafael is also here. Jocelyn, welcome. How was your day, guys? Was it good? Was it nice? Was it easy? How was it? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. It was a very. Uh, it was a. Uh, how can I say that? How can I express? Uh, I didn't go to work today. I was sleeping the whole day. I, how can I say that? Uh, it was a very... Okay. How can I say, Dia Calmal? Relaxing. Uh, relaxing day. It was a relaxing day. Yeah, like... Yeah, that, that can be one choice, you know. <laughs> that, yeah, okay. that would have been nice you know yeah whenever we have these like days that you can take it easy you know it's, it's good you know, from time to time actually today is tuesday right okay yeah. my day was... Mira, mm -hmm. i gotta i have to say i want to i want you to help me out because i i have one doubt mm -hmm. i want to know like for example i was making sentences in my notebook in my book and I was something like, I was writing something like, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt your English, English class. And, and then I realized that I can say, uh, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry for interrupting your English class. But I wonder, I wondered um, what is the, the proper way to, to say that. It was, can I use the infinitive or can the, the another one? That's a great question. And, I, and if you don't mind, I can explain to everyone. I will take like just a few minutes. Let's see. Um, the best explanation for your question is the following. Let me um, make a parenthesis on, on the class. So tell me the expression you said so I can write it on the board here, please. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt your English class. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. That was the first yeah the first one. In the to... first wave. Exactly. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, right? Yeah. Interrupt your English class. Okay. Now the second is I'm sorry. For interrupting, right? Yeah. Your English class. Okay. So the answer to this is both are okay. Um, there's a mistake in the interrupting, you know, the second part. Let me see if I can make I can make the correction. So this one is in let me write it again, write it, write it again. So I'm sorry to interrupt. This is infinity. Blah, blah, blah. You're um, sorry for interrupt. Inter interrupt. Interrupting your and so on. Okay. So the explanation to this is the following. When you say I'm sorry to interrupt your, that's totally fine. When you say I'm sorry for interrupting you, it's okay. That's both are correct. So what can I say about this? Whenever you are using prepositions, preposition, if you wanna add a verb, this one must must go in in ing form all the time. Always, always. If it is a verb you want to say, unless it's a noun, but if it is a verb, the verb will be all the time in ing. 
So that's why it's not recommended. I mean, you can still save this, okay? But if you don't, if you don't, if you don't say, like if I say, I'm sorry for the interrupt you, then that's a mistake because for is a preposition. And, and if you know that after a preposition, we need to have an ing form. If I say, I'm sorry for interrupt until here, then that is a mistake. I hear people saying, thank you for come. Thank you for listen. Those are mistakes. Because after four, you need to say ing form. So the something else that, that can help you is the following. You need to know what are those prepositions. And based on my um, opinion and, uh, and experience, the most common ones are the following. You have at, for, in, about, after, um, before. These are the most common prepositions. And there might be some other on. Let's see. Um, so after all of these prepositions, you have to say, you know, this is like, if you are gonna say a verb, you must, there's, there's not a choice. You must say ing. So this is plus ing. So basically, um, if I say, I'm sorry to interrupt, that's okay. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Because I understand for is a preposition, I need to have, you know, my verb in the ing form. Let me give you some more examples. I'm gonna use a different preposition. <clears throat> like what, let's say before. Before um or about what's more common? I'm thinking. I'm thinking like I'm thinking about. If I say I'm thinking about to go, mm -mm, mistake. Because uh, about is a preposition. After about, you have to say ing. You know that. So I'm thinking about going to the beach or whatever. I am good at to play soccer, play soccer. Mm -mm, I'm good at playing soccer because you know, uh, at is a preposition, okay? And I am interest, interest, interested in learning English. Mm -mm, I am in, interested in learning English. Okay, because in is, is a preposition. So, as a matter of conclusion, whenever you have the ing, you have the, the prepositions, if you wanna say a verb, make sure you say it in ing form. So if you are not sure, then use the infinitive, but but never say, I'm interested in learn English. Mm -mm. Thank you for listening. Mm -mm. Thank you for listening. Thanks for coming. No, you don't say thank for come. Thanks for coming. So basically, um, this is the way how you should like memorize it. Prepositions plus ing for. And that's how we speak. Um, maybe we can start thinking about some other actions and where we use these prepositions. And, and that's basically what I can say as of now about your question. I don't know if I give you the idea as to what I'm saying. Yes. Okay, so basically this is this is how, how how it goes. Let me see. There are some other things, for example, that you know that after a specific verb you must say ing form. That's when you are that's when we talk about infinitive plus infinitive or inf infinitive plus ing form. But that's a topic about like for example, I can say um I love playing soccer, but I don't say I want playing. I want playing soccer. I want to play soccer. So, of course, after one, you have to say infinitive. You don't say ing for. So, how do how do you distinguish or how do you differentiate this? Uh, my suggestion is to check on the list because the list of first ing for and gerunds are already given. In case you know it's hard for you to say, oh, what, what do I say now? Then. Uh, my suggestion, that was exactly what I did. I got my own list, the most common ones. So I knew what to say. But sometimes the, 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 change, the meaning changes a little bit. Just to give you an example, hopefully I'll be able to you know, explain this, this clearer. If I say, I stop, I stop playing or I stop smoking, 
It's not the same if I say I stop the smoke. Just by changing the ing form in the second action, the meaning change. So if I say I stop to, to smoke, maybe I was on the way and I stopped my car and I and I had a cigarette. But if I say I stopped smoking, I don't do it anymore. You see? So the ing form plays an important role. Just to give you a, more examples in how prepositions and how ing forms can change the meaning. But as of now, as of, once again, you know, to in a nutshell, to make this uh, shorter, your question, I would say you can say both. And it's still, you know, you're transmitting the idea. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Perfect. So, uh, guys, that was a quick question that uh, that Robert had. So, thank you for asking. In case, you know, we have the answer, we will, you know, go over really quick. So now, talk about, let's talk about uh, the class. I had a very quick activity, guys. The activity is uh, verbally. I want you to express that this, uh, this activity is, you know, so you speak English and then you can tell me, you know, if you can think about at this moment, three wishes that you have, which ones, you know, can you mention? Where mm. comes to your mind, whatever. The first one, uh, to be fluently speaking English, helping yes. the homeless. Uh, yeah, I, of course, uh, the same with the uh, any homeless animals. Feed. To feed any homeless animal. Nice. That's a good. That's a good cause. You know. Yeah. I imagine how nice that will be. Right. Helping mothers. Any other? Thank you so much, Robert. Any other participation? And the wishes can be whatever. You know. Just I want you to start speaking something. Okay. Uh, being becoming fluent is a good one, like uh, Robert already mentioned. You know, that's really good. Um, being influenced because that's one of the purposes, right, of studying the language. Yes. All right. Anybody else? I Anybody? wish I wish help a lot money. <laughs> okay. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, I I wish I were rich. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's that can be another one, right? Any anybody else? Diego? Uh, in my case, um, be able to graduate for the university. Nice. What are you studying, Diego? And administration, mm -hmm. business administration. Business administration. Nice. Okay. Yeah, you'll do it. You know, time really flies. <laughs> you know, in the blink of an eye, you'll see you're already graduating. So that's good. Yeah. So I wish you the best in that. I know you'll get it. No problem if you are busy. I know Christian is reporting that he's working or he's just leaving uh, his job. No problem. Thank you for letting me know. Now, um, let's start today's class with uh, the following. But before I get started, what did we talk about, you know, last class? What do you remember about last class? What did we say? Mm -hmm. Anybody? What did we talk about yesterday? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Use so to neither either. Okay, nice. I'm going to start with a quick quiz and then I am going to explain again. Okay. So the first one, I want a volunteer to read this um question and tell me the best choice. Hold on. Anybody? What is the best choice? Is there? There, somebody said said either. Okay, let me click it. All right. When it turns green, it because you were right. 
Okay, nice. Okay, Let, this is only a quick exercise. What about now I want you to say to me the answer and explain to me or into the class why you make that selection. So what's the answer for this one? Neither. Why do you say neither? Um, porque está adelante, está el an, en an hay. Y okay. es negativa, creo yo. Ok, muy bien. Entonces, esa es la respuesta. Es negativa, right Y la inversión, right Ok. Cool. Vamos a darle la oportunidad a alguien más. Solo son 10 quick questions. Veamos, ¿quién nos quiere ayudar con esta? Read it y luego me dice cuál es la respuesta. Hoy va a leer y va a explicar por qué. Take your time. Es un quiz corto, pero el propósito más bien es explicar el por qué. The answer is such. Huh? Anybody, please don't be afraid to participate. Tratemos de apurarnos un poquito para que de esta manera vayamos este, nosotros. Este, so, so do I. Roberto, ¿por qué sería so? Um, porque va antes del do. Que va a ser vamos a ponerle so, veamos. Ok, tiene mucha razón. Adicionalmente, era so porque era una afirmativa, era una afirmación la que estaba haciendo, no era, no era ninguna negation o negative. Escuchemos a alguien más. I want to hear, ahí falta una a, ahí el, el mistake en el verbo have, pero, pero el, este, quiero que me digan what's the answer. Either or neither, and why? Why is is any of this? I'm sorry, Sonia. Either. Either. Why do we say either? Por qué decimos either? Um, porque es negativo, pero no tenemos en sí el verbo. No tenemos el verbo. Okay. ¿Y qué tenemos entonces ahí en la respuesta de la letter B? I haven't. Sería como la negación contractada. ¿Y cómo le llamamos a ese haven't de forma general? Se me ha olvidado por el momento, Tisha. No problem, no problem. ¿Alguien más sabe cómo se le llama al, al, o qué rol es, qué rol? La pregunta es qué rol está jugando haven't ahí en esa, en esa oración o en esa respuesta. Eso es clave. Is the auxiliary. Nice, David. Muy bien. Es el auxiliar. Es el, es el auxiliar. Bien. Ajá. Bien. Bien. Sigamos entonces. Pongámosle porque estaba en negativo. Le dijeron que era happens. Muy bien. All right. Let's continue. Vamos a ver uno más. ¿Quién me ayuda con esta otra? Uno que no haya participado. Por favor, siéntese en la libertad de hacerlo. Usted también es parte de la clase. So, Bye. So do I. ¿Alguien le gustaría leerlo y traducirlo? Por favor, todo. Um, I have you do well tomorrow. Thanks. So do I. And good luck to you too. Ok. Ok. Eh, sería como, I hope you do well tomorrow. ¿Qué será? Será que espero que te vaya bien mañana. Gracias. Uh -huh. Yo también. Buena suerte tú también. Muy bien. Sí. Nice. Good. So do I. So do I, ¿verdad? I like it. Thank you so much. Yo veo que tienen la idea. Ahora, ¿cómo sería eso? This is present perfect. ¿Cuál es la... What is the best answer for this exercise? Somebody to read it and to use the correct answer, please. I have never worked for a large company. Mm -hmm. I haven't either. Either. Muy bien. Este, la respuesta, la selección está correcta. Solo para, creo que era Alfredo. Este, voy a subrayar este verbo. Ese verbo, este, ¿alguien sabe cómo se pronuncia? Work. 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 Pueden decirme cuál es el sonido final del verbo. Sí. De la vez. Sí. Una T. 
Muy bien, sí saben, ¿verdad? Muy bien. Cuando el verbo en su forma base, esa es una regla de, de básico, porque es pasado simple, el, el verbo termina con una K, nuestro sonido a, a emitir para el ED, que es el, el verbo regular, es, termina con una K, es con una T, ¿verdad? ¿Ok? Therefore, aquí decimos, worked, 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 worked. Si usted aún tiene duda de por qué es worked y no worked, entonces la invitación es que vaya a revisar los tres sonidos que existen del regular verse. Voy a anotar aquí por si alguno regular, regular verb, ending, ending sounds, ending sounds. Ok, ahí se va a encontrar ya, en extra sílabo y ya. Ok, eso solo es un paréntesis. Para aquellos que se preguntan por qué no es, eh, por qué no es work, si no es work. Por qué no es eh, want, si no wanted. ¿Por qué no es played y no played? Okay. ¿Por qué no es uh, listened y no listened? ¿Por qué no es liked y no liked? Okay. So that's the answer. Uh, why do I explain this? Because I want you to please uh, start like visualizing, you know, how the English um, pronunciation works. And this is important because whenever you pronounce ED verbs, you have to keep in mind the, these three sounds. And we're gonna be using the, the ED regular verbs like all the time. That's why I'm, I'm like making this very quick parenthesis to explain it, okay? All right, uh, let's move on. So somebody said already the answer. The answer said it was either. Porque la, el, el auxiliar estaba en negativo, ¿verdad? Entonces, so either, si usara neither, if I use neither, then that, that's a mistake because I'm going to make a double negative and that will, I will, I might lose the intended meaning. So what is the answer for this one, class? The answer for this one? Anybody? So did I. Let's click it. Bien. Awesome. I like it. Vamos a terminar. Solo faltan tres. Luego vamos a hacer un review de todas las. Okay. Let's see. Who wants to answer this one? I have visited Spain a couple of times. So what is the answer for this one? Mm -hmm. Two. Two. Let's click it. Vamos. Right. ¿Verdad? Ya vamos a estudiar sobre la estructura. Dos más faltan. Alguien que me lea y me responda a esa, por favor. Buddy, solo uno. Just one, please. What do we say? Somebody to read it, alguien que la lea y luego que nos diga la respuesta, please. Only one. Están 22 conectados. Solo uno necesito que lea, por favor. Okay, I will do it. Uh -huh. Thank the you. Email, the email, the, the email they sent me didn't have any advice for the interview. Aquí sería... Neither did mine. Okay, muy bien. I like it. Yes, it's a negative, right? It's a negative, it's a negative agreement. Okay. And the last but the last one is I bought a new a new suit for my interview. I did so or I did too. Two. You creo que ya the majority of you are understanding how it is working, right? Entonces, ahora, vamos a hacer un, un ejercicio adicional. Tengo dos más prácticas. Before, before I do the next practice, do you have any specific question about the platform? Any exercise that you don't understand, that you've been working on, that you want to double check with me? Do you have any anything like this? Any question? 
before I, I start with the with the presentation that, that I'm going to start in a minute. Do you have any any question? Are we okay with the platform? Any specific question that you might have, Clarence? Good. So far, so good. No. No. No questions. But for me, that's that's important because if there are no questions, I can I can keep on reinforcing the the topic. That was what I promised yesterday. And then if you see the the videos on the platform, they are talking about how to use so, to, neither, and either. And the last topics us of this week are about how to use would like and would would as a as a modal verb. So let's analyze these this information. I'm going to need your help for you to uh, read and also participate with your ideas. Okay. So let's start with the first one. First idea. I need somebody to help me out. In this text, we're gonna learn many good theory, but I like it because it also provides examples. I need one volunteer to read, read out loud. Okay. Anybody? Can you see? Thank you so much, Alfredo. Go ahead. When someone express a statement, we can sim simply use phrases like this. Me neither, neither do I, so do I. It is C to indicate that the some or similar situation applies to another person, world, entity. Okay, you see, thank you so much for your participation. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger, okay? Like this. So, to express, to express, to indicate that you have the same idea or similar idea applies to what other people is saying, you can respond by saying, me neither, a little bit informal, neither do I, so do I. And that will be basically saying, you know, I agree with what you are saying. That is the first idea that we have. What about next idea? Let, let me ask Jocelyn. Jocelyn, what do we have on the screen right now? What does it say? What does it say at, at the moment? Can you read what, what you see on the screen? Yes, please. In positive statement. Positive statement, okay. Let's analyze it. This is the formula. This is the formula that you, you are going to find on the on the platform using so. How do we use it? Well, we say so, auxiliary verb or modal verb and the pronoun. If I say, Jenny Marisol, if I say, um, I, love, I, love, I love playing basketball, I love playing basketball, and then the, the uh, tense is love is the main verb who's present. So I should say, so do I. So do will be the auxiliary and I is the pronoun. Okay, if I say, Ana Maria, if I say, I can't play soccer, uh, let me, let's make it positive because that's the intention here. So if I say, I can play soccer very well. So what, what do you say? My, my question is, I'm sorry, my statement is I can play soccer. I can play soccer. I can, pl I can play soccer very well, right? So what do I say to respond using the structure given? I can play soccer very well. So how do I respond this positive idea? Solo using la formula, no hay que salirse de la formula. Okay. Might be like, so do so, I can, so do, so do can I play? No, eh, so es, do can I, so do can I. Solo va a ser, so, so you can. So can I. So can I. So let's so can I now. 
ya, ya sea auxiliar o modal, pero no pueden ir los dos. Uh -huh. So can I? Exactly. Let me give you another example. Let's, we're going to keep practicing here. If I say, um, she, she dances. She dances uh, nicely. Okay. So if I say she dances nicely, what is the response? Si quiero a decir que yo también. So do I. So, so, do, so I. do I. Y si quiero decir que ella también, ¿cómo sería? Que digamos que... Vale, vamos a ponerle nombre, vamos a ponerle nombre. Pensamos que vamos a decir que Judy Magdalena, she's a really good dancer. Y entonces decimos, uh, Judy, Judy, Judy uh, dances, dances um, beautifully. Judy dances beautifully. Yo quiero decir que ella también o otra persona. ¿Cómo diría? Digamos que está Judy y está también Ana María. Y quiero decir que también Ana María lo hace o baila bien. ¿Cómo sería? So, she does. So, she so, 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 en el caso sería como se llama, es das, so das she. Nice. Y veo que sí, algunos sí están ahí entendiendo, otros que no, no participan, porque no entienden, o si sí se entiende, o está muy fácil, no sería que siempre lo dejen saber. Ok, let's continue. Vamos a continuar. Ese es el, ese es el affirmative, right? This is positive. What about, vamos a continuar con la otra idea. Take a look at this one. Some examples. Algunos ejemplos, guys. Some examples. First one. First one. Okay, también vamos a ver si logra presentarlos. Me, me gustaría que lo leyera Janira, Isabel. Lea la, the first example, please. Ahí está en la pantalla. Celine is watching TV. So I am. So am I. So am I. Ahí decimos que Sorry. Celine. It's okay. Celine is watching TV. So am I. Ella está viendo tele. Yo también. So am I. Why do I say so am I? Because it's using the verb to be. It's, it's my auxiliary verb. Vamos la otra. David Armando. Read David. Sam. Uh, can you speak price Rudy? So can you? Okay, I'm bien. So can I? Yo bien. So can I? What is the what is the moral of Can Alfredo? Next one, please. Tell la otra. Ah uh, no, uh, I have a question. Uh -huh, go ahead. Which question is so or or is so? So, oh, oh, so, so, oh, like, oh, 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 uh -huh. so, so, oh, uh, so, so, uh, so, todito, so, 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 eh, quizás usted dice, escucha u, pero en realidad les, la pronunciación como tal, literal, de la letra o inglesa es o. O. Es como hacemos O y el último sonido lo hacemos como haciendo nuestros labios round, sí, redondos. O. So. 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 Pero no, no pronuncio la U, solo hago la forma de cómo que va a decir la U. So. O sea, termino diciendo So. So. Pero digo, mi, mis labios los hago rounded, así, redondo. So. So, so, nunca cambié la vocal, ni, nunca dije U, pero sí mi, mi boca as, asumió o, o, o adoptó la posición de so, pero siempre va a ser so. Ok, lea el otro, por favor, este, Terry. Lea la otra, yo creo que era, no sé si era... Alfredo, ¿quién preguntó? Sí, lea la, la de Terry, please. Terry 
has completed his master degree, so has Jane. Yes, so has Jane. Why did they use has? Because has is the is the auxiliary verb, right? Has, has present perfect, and then and so because it's affirmative, it's something positive. And James is being used as a as a pronoun. Well, in this case, is 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 a noun. As you can see, Terry has completed. Una vez aquí es un verbo en ir ir completed his master degree 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 de, de, degree degree degree. Okay, let's let's finish this exercise. I'm going to need Walter. Walter, read the next one, please. His parents show be more responsive. Uh, so show me. Gracias, Walter. Nunca puso en blanquito hasta ahora. Uh, his parents should be more responsible. Muy bien. So should we? Exactly. The auxiliary, well, is that auxiliary is a modal verb, which is should. Yes, you got it. Awesome. Diego, ¿tenía alguna pregunta? Preguntas, guys, hasta el momento. Yes, I have, I, I, I have a question. Ah, uh, yesterday, I don't uh, connect the class. So uh, my question is, between, there, there is some different between me too and so, uh, the, the example of Celine is watching TV. Uh, I show me too, and, and so I am. It's a different in two answers. Mm -hmm. That is a great question. I know somebody will explain. What did we say about uh, me too, me neither yesterday class? What did we say about that? Who remembers? So we can respond to the question. So we can respond Diego's question. Who remembers? Repeat that question. Yeah, the question is um, if if I say me too or me neither, and if I say so am I or neither am I, so what is the difference between? Because that is the question that was just asked. So yesterday I mentioned that. Let's see who remembers. What what did I say about this type of expressions yesterday? Who remembers? I remember you told us the the like the most um, informal way to say that you are agree with that you are agree with some agreement. You can say, for example, you you say you, you we were doing sentences before, and in a, if you want to give. A uh, positive uh, like agreement in a informal way. You we usually say me too, but in a like in a posh way or in a proper way, uh, in a in a in a formal way, we should say. Uh, so do I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depending. Or so am I. Depending yes. in the model that we are using at, exactly. that, at that moment, but exactly. it just depend in this in the in the in the situation, depending on the context and what kind of answer you are gonna give. Correct. You already answered the quick question. It's more about formality. Okay, is it has to do with formality? It has to do with proper English. Robert said in a posh situation, so like being elegant, he says, right? But then um, basically the, the easiest answer is it has to do with formality. Me neither, me too, neither am I, neither, neither. This is like very informal. informal. We're going to see it in a minute. Actually, the presentation has this information. Let's continue. You'll see it. Let's continue. Uh, some other ideas, because time really flies. We're gonna go a little bit faster. How do we use two? I know that if you already watch the videos, you find this formula. What happened here? We change the order. We first say the pronoun or that subject, then we say the auxiliary or a modal verb, but we leave two at the end. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll leave it, we'll leave it at the end. Two doesn't go at the beginning, like so. We'll leave two at the end of the of the expression. Okay. So let's take a look at these extras, these, these examples. All right. First one. Let's see. I'm gonna need somebody uh to help me out. Let's see, Sonia Guadalupe. What well, read the first example? Selim is watching TV. I am too. Thank you so much. Uh, next one, Jaime. Jaime, please read the next one. Next one. Jaime Vladimir, yeah, you. Your microphone, Jaime. Your microphone is not okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm not sorry. Uh, Stephanie was so worried yesterday. I was too. Oh, that's the next one. Okay, good. Yeah. So Terry has completed his master's degree, James has two. And the last, let's see, Janira Isabel, the last, please. Mary. Mary and Sam will join the class, the chess club. Jessica will too. Exactly, the chess club. As you can see, guys, we're leaving two at the end. That's what we have to pay attention. We don't leave it at the beginning because this is the structure, how we use it, okay? So having said this one, we're going to move on with the next ideas. Before I continue, do you have any question? Any question? Any, because uh, we are going to focus on negative statement now. Yes, Janita, tell me. Teacher, en la anterior del su, veía que lo ponía al principio, pero el tu siempre va al final. Esa es la diferencia entre el su y el tu. Esa es la diferencia. Y también cuando usamos el, el so, hay una inversión. Por ejemplo, lo regular sería, si yo digo, este, I play soccer. Un ejemplo bien sencillo. I play soccer es presente simple. Si uso el, el tú sería uh, simplemente decimos I, I do too. Porque el, el play soccer es presente simple. Pero si es el so, digo so y no digo no. so, no digo so I do, digo so do I. Hago el cambio so en, 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 la, en, la, en la estructura. Lo hago como si fuera pregunta, so do I. En realidad es por cuestión, por cuestión gramatical y, es, y, y estructural es que se hace la inversión y siempre va a ser, va a ser así. Si so, so I do, no, no suena raro, ahí doesn't make sense. Because ya aprendimos que hacemos la inversión. We say so do I. So does she. So will I. So have I. Ok. Pero también estaba viendo que en el su, eh, según el, el verbo que usaba, así era como el complemento. Y mi pregunta es si también para el tú es igual o no. Sí, el auxiliar. El auxiliar, le voy a mostrar aquí la, 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 la fórmula, la fórmula, la fórmula, la fórmula, mire, el to, aquí está la fórmula. Ambos, tanto to con so, y digamos so, no digamos su, porque escucha algún, es, es so, y el, llevan auxiliar, el auxiliar o el verbo modal que va a llevar, va a siempre ir de acuerdo a la oración. Si mi tiempo es future, tengo que usar el future. Si es present perfect, present perfect. Si es past, past. Y el auxiliar es did. Si es present simple, do o does. Siempre. O sea que ahí se va a adaptar de acuerdo al, al tiempo que estemos hablando. Y vamos a hacer un par de ejercicios más. Para que, se, para que vea que el auxiliar es el que fue un rol importante. Voy a parar un poquito más porque hay un par, par de ejercicios que vamos a resolver. Ya hicimos esto. Veamos ahorita el uso del negative statement. Okay, you have to pay attention here because uh, we say using neither. Neither, miren cómo funciona el neither. Neither, auxiliary, o el verb, y luego el pronoun. Neither. Auxiliar podría ser do y luego el, el, el pronombre. Neither do I, pero eso es para negative. Neither, neither will I, neither did I, neither does she, and so on. It will depend on the, on the, the sentence. I'm going to read it, o alguien me ayuda a leerlas todas para avanzar, porque el tiempo se termina bien rápido. Me ayudan con estos ejemplos, please. Sonia, thank you so much, Sonia. Sandra can know 
play the guitar, neither can I. Jennifer, Hans, eating her sandwich, neither has Jane. Stephanie was not worried at all, neither was his husband. Mary and Sam won't attend the meeting, neither will I. Okay, so that's it, Brian. Thank you so much for your help, Sonia. El neither me está haciendo un agreement con negative sentences. Neither can't. Neither hasn't. Neither was not. Okay? Neither won't. So, in conclusion, we use neither with negative. And the structure can because it's can. This is the, the moral. Has because it's has. Will because it's will not. Okay? And then the subject will depend on the idea I want to express. As long as it makes sense and that's the idea I want to say, you know, you are expressing agreement with the, with the subject and the idea pre previously mentioned. So that's how it works. Let's continue. Let's continue. We're going to do some exercises. Hopefully, I'm gonna, we're going to be able to finish it. Otherwise, we're going to finish. We're going to continue tomorrow. But what about either? Either is a little bit different. And this is something really important. Just pay attention to the formula. Pronoun, auxiliary, or moral pair in plus either. Why do we say either? Because uh, I'm using my, my auxiliary in negative form. So let's take a look at the example. Here we have. Derek isn't sleeping. This is negative. So I can use either my auxiliary goes in negative. See? Derek isn't sleeping. I am not either. Sandra can't can play the guitar. I can't either. So basically I'm using can't, that, that's why I can say either because either itself is positive. Therefore I need to say the auxiliary in negative so it makes sense. You take a look at this example. Jennifer hasn't, so James hasn't either. What would happen if I say, uh, James has not neither, then I'm making a double negative, and then I will, my intention or my meaning will be lost, because I cannot use double negative. Double negative becomes, becomes positive, you see? Like when we have math symbols, uh, like uh, minus divider or, or times minus equals something or, or plus. I don't remember the, the um, formula, but my, my idea or my point is that we cannot use double negative. That's why we say negative. If we say the negative um, auxiliary or whatever, we say either. But at the end, it's the same with neither. It's just that the structure changes a little bit. So, guys, I really hope is, this is helping, you know, with the intention of clarifying. Um, this is what somebody asked at the beginning, and I wanted to point it out because it's very important to know it. Informal interactions, once again, informal interaction, informal, okay? When speaking is, when speaking or in less formal writings, regardless of the tense, do you understand regardless? Entiende la palabra regardless aquí. ¿Saben que es regardless of? ¿Saben que es regardless no, of? No, no. Regardless of es una frase, aprendansela, yo me la aprendí y no se me olvidó porque siento que siempre la estoy usando y regardless of significa sin tomar en cuenta. Regardless, regardless, regardless of es sin tomar en cuenta las condiciones. Regardless of whatever, you know, regardless of this, va a pasar lo de esto. Entonces, regardless of the thing, sin considerar el tiempo, Gramatical, es tense, usamos me too o me neither. Ok, esta era la pregunta de alguien hace un rato. ¿verdad? ¿Qué pasa si usamos me too o me neither? Se puede, sin importar el tiempo. O sea que para hablar inglés rápido e informal, no necesitamos estar poniéndole so have I, so can I, neither, neither do I, neither does she. Pero eh, si todo le ponemos me too o me neither, 
este, cuando de repente alguien diga, so can I, y que dijo, so can I, or, uh, I won't either, y usted, pues, I won't either, what is that, por eso es importante, guys, that we understand, you know, the structures, but it, I don't recommend uh, using me too all the time, si usted usa me too all the time, y me neither, es porque es quizá, es un basic user of language, but if you want to sound more uh, like academic and if you want to show that your English proficiency is, is higher, then you use what we've been studying. That is the point, okay? I really hope you understand what I'm saying. Don't misunderstand me on this, okay? Any questions? Questions before we move on? Questions, class, before we move on? Any questions? Tenemos a un par de ocho minutos todavía. Questions? No, don't be afraid to ask, please. If you don't understand, let me know, because that would be really important for me to review or to provide you with more examples. Let's take a look at these ones. Uh, okay. vamos, vamos a pedirle a, a Fatima, Laura, que lea the first one. Okay, quiero mi cara de Este es el otro, no es ese. Brenda Díaz, help us, please. Read the first, the first one. Selena Janet. Okay. Uh, David Alberto. Yeah, teacher. Read the first sentence, la que tenemos aquí. I have. Okay. I have been studying a lot of recently. Me too. Muy bien. Esa es la informal. ¿Cómo diríamos formalmente ahí? ¿Alguien tiene una idea? I've, I have been studying a lot recently. What is the form or academic or, or proper English? So do I. ¿Será so do I o será que habría que cambiar algo ahí? participle of be might be uh, I don't even know what it would be the right answer but if if you want me to tell you how do I think yeah would be the right answer Please. might be like uh, if he is a negative, no, no, this, like... no, this is a this is affirmative, uh, Robert. If you see, okay. I have been studying is is not negative. It's affirmative. Maybe uh, like so, being I. Or what help me? Let me know. Mm -hmm. All right. What is what is the auxiliary? What is the auxiliary? The verb be. Is that is that I the auxiliary? Have, uh, I have that's the auxiliary. The verb have exactly. So and so we... might be like so have I? So have I exactly. So have I. That's the one. See, Clara, no sé lo que nos quiere ayudar con la otra. Clara, Sanchez, nos ayuda con la otra. The next one, please. Pero, have... piche, mm -hmm. es de. Como venía en camino, realmente no, no entendí, venía en moto. Ah, iba de Renegade. Sí, o sea, sí, ahí. Me da un ejemplo. Claro que sí, este, de hecho, pues estamos, es, eso es un ejemplo, lo que están ahí en, en, la, en, la, en la pantalla. He never attended the class regularly. Esta la es una forma negativa, es negativo, por el never me lo hace negativo, ok, never. Entonces, la, la informal es me neither, pero ¿cómo lo haríamos formalmente? La formalidad, ¿cómo la, cómo, how do you say it here? So if I say, ah, he never attended the class regularly. Me neither informal. But then, what do I say? The first step is to identify the auxiliary. Can anybody tell me what's the auxiliary? O sea que lo único que se le va a añadir es el mine, algo así. 
me neither, me neither, me neither, me neither si fuera, fuera negativo y es informal, pero yo quiero que, sí. si quiero, quiero que lleguemos al punto que va a ser formal, ¿verdad? Alguien nos ayuda, aquí nos vamos a quedar, mañana vamos a hacer los ejercicios, me faltaron dos ejercicios más que hacer, pero I promise we will keep, you know, this, y quiero que pregunten, porque la semana está llena de este tema, más un modal más que vamos a agregar, podemos dedicar una clase más a este tema. Y si mañana tienen preguntas, si you have questions about the platform tomorrow, traiganlas específicamente cuáles son las que discutimos en, en la sesión. Pero antes de terminar, ¿quién me ayuda? What is, what is the auxiliary, guys? ¿Cuál es el auxiliar de esto? I think it should be he didn't either. Muy bien, he didn't either. Sí, sí, estamos hablando de alguien más, pero si quiero usar que yo, ¿cómo diría? I didn't, I didn't either. I didn't either. Y la otra manera, ¿cuál sería? Oh, uh, this is in simple fast. Uh -huh. I can see yeah. the verb. Uh -huh. But might be like, uh, neither did I. Neither did I. Usted sí ya comprendió el tema. Ya, ya puedo ver que sí. Ya, yeah. neither did I. Exactly. Good. Quizás haya más que ya hacen también en el nivel suyo que lo han comprendido. Pues quiero que ustedes siempre pregunten. Vamos a la última. Okay, I have been feeling very, I haven't been, I haven't been feeling very well. Me neither. ¿Cómo lo hago formal? How do I make it formal? What is the auxiliary? Can anybody identify the auxiliary here? I haven't either. I haven't either. Muy bien. ¿Y la otra sería? Neither, neither have I. Neither have I. Muy bien. Neither have I. Neither, el, el auxiliar have, luego el, el pronoun I. Y ahí termina. Sí. Ok. Bueno, guys, al terminamos, no logramos pasar a la otra lista de ejercicios. We didn't get to finish the next exercise list. So tomorrow I'm going to retain the topic. Please ask questions. If you have any, investigate, watch the videos on the platform, complete the exercises. And if you finish the exercises, move on to the need term. Don't leave it. Don't leave it there. Because if you have any question about the need term, we can, you know, go and check it. Because we have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Three days more, three hours. Okay to work on these topics and also the midterm too. All right, so it's been a blessing to see you guys. Try to rest and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 B